Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first in a series of Click Philosophy debates where profound questions in philosophy will be answered with discussions between philosophers throughout history. The question that the first debate will deal with is, does God exist? This question has been pondered ever since the emergence of religion and is notorious even in the modern world where it helps create epic wars in YouTube comment sections. This may be because it is difficult to reconcile faith used by many religions to assert the existence of God with reason and logic. However, some philosophers throughout history have attempted to prove the existence of God through reason, and tonight we'll consult William Paley and pit his design argument against the ideas of David Hume and the findings of Charles Darwin. To begin the debate, William Paley, who is for the existence of God, will now present his design argument. The design argument, which is a teleological argument, is an argument that most people are quite familiar with. My argument begins with a watchmaker analogy. Say that, while you're taking a walk in the park, you come across a watch. Judging from the intricate details on the surface, the rhythmic movement of its hands and its ability to keep time, you would conclude that such a complex object with an evident purpose must have been designed by a being with intelligence, in this case, the watchmaker. Now, take a look at nature, even at yourself. The vastly intricate pathways of blood vessels, nerves, enormously complicated connections between neurons that allow you to perceive and respond to stimuli is even more complicated than a watch. Moreover, we see that each component possesses a very clear purpose for its existence. All around nature, complexities and purposes for objects can be observed and inferred, which suggests vast intelligence, insight, and ability. This naturally leads to the conclusion that there was an intelligent and powerful creator, and this can be thought of as God. Mr. Hume, although your argument seems convincing at first glance, I do not agree with the conclusion that can be reached from observing nature alone. Firstly, there is not much evidence to make an undoubtful conclusion that God acted as the designer for all things in the universe. Take the case of those born with organ complications and disabilities. If God is understood as an all-powerful and all-knowing being, then how could it have made such a mistake of designing an imperfect organ that can only partially serve its purpose? And if God is all good as well, then how could it have purposefully designed the organ to be far from perfect, as to hinder the livelihood of those affected by it and deny them the right to well-being and happiness? There are a range of possible conclusions we can draw from the existing evidence in nature. How can we be sure that certain animals were not designed by aliens rather than God? The point I am making is that no matter how things in nature exhibit traces of intelligent design, we can never be fully sure that God is the one who designed it. Therefore, the existence of God as necessitated by the design argument is quite questionable. I think that the biggest reason why people believe that organisms exhibit intelligent design is due to the fact that they appear to be very well adapted to their natural environment. However, I believe that the theory of adaptation by natural selection explains away the need for any intelligent being to have designed creatures. In my observation of finches in the Galapagos Islands, I uncovered a crucial process in which organisms naturally adapt their environment without the need for any divine intervention or design. Take an example of an island with an abundance of seeds. Originally, the finches which arrived from the mainland would have possessed variations of their beaks. However, over time, finches with beaks that were better for eating seeds would propagate better than those which lacked such beaks and thus dominate the island. So their beaks, which are excellently suited to the environment in which they live in, have not been designed by God, but rather through a process of natural selection. This explains away the need for intelligent design in giving rise to complex and well-adapted anatomical features. And the time is up! Which side wins? You decide! Comment your thoughts below, but please keep it to the specific debate. Oh, and of course, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe.